fair and just. Here I need to spend a few minutes. What is the meaning of fair and just? Your mother has a problem with your wife. You don't just side with one of them. No, you must be just. You must be fair. If your mother is wrong, she is wrong even if she is your mother. We have an attitude where we say, my mother is my door to paradise. My brother, sometimes your mother is your door to hell. Did you know that? From Islam, I'm telling you, if that mother of yours is oppressive and she is doing something wrong, she could be your door to hell, not to heaven. Do you know that? Wallahi. And I, I, I am saying this with all passion because we have seen a lot of marriages where the mother-in-law thinks she is the queen who is married to the woman who you are married to before you. And then she comes and relays all her unjust instructions which are absolutely unacceptable and the man just sits down that's my mother that's my mother that's my mother how long are you going to keep on saying that's your mother when she is oppressing your wife something somehow somewhere needs to be said either speak to your father or tell your mother mother i love you so much i did not marry this woman for her to be a means of taking my love away from you or your love away from me the love i have for you is totally different from the love i have for her so mother i will love you forever but i want to tell you this is the line you do not cross my beloved mother and you kiss her forehead you can kiss her hands and her cheeks and tell her that my mother you are wrong lay it down when you do not lay your territory your marriage cannot work people don't know where is my limit they don't know so how can your marriage work your mother doesn't know your father doesn't know some fathers issue instructions to their daughters-in-law worse than the instruction of their own son to that wife of theirs so what was the point father why didn't you just marry this woman one time that is not fair you cannot just come and say, that's my daughter-in-law. I must tell her, you stand here, you go there. No, they have their life. Give them their freedom. Understand they too need to grow in marriage to live happily ever after. It's not just you who comes and dish instructions and go out. I know this, what I've said here might be a bit bitter for some people to digest, but it is a fact of life. It is a red button that we press and we need to press it and constantly remind people because when you talk about happily ever after, remember, you need to address issues that are current and valid. Otherwise, you are wasting your time. I cannot speak about a fairy tale because none of us will then learn something by the time we walk out of these doors. So this is why we say you need to be just. Tell your father where he should stand with respect. And please, the parents do not hate your child just because he needs a bit of time with his wife. No. Or the wife needs time with the husband or the children. No, allow them that. Let them go. You do not have to go everywhere your children go. Uh, we are going for a holiday, for example, to Penang or to Lenkawi. So now Father Nisa says, we are coming with. Okay, you come with, mashallah. The next year we are going to holiday. We are going to this place. We are coming with. The following year we are... So whenever did they go alone? Never. Why? Because mom and dad tag along. Give them once or twice, a few times, give them their own. Tell them, look, you guys go along, inshallah, enjoy yourselves. And next time we will join you. Perhaps you can arrange for us. Yes, it is very important to look after your parents. Believe me, we are not at all undermining that. That is a rule on its own. Look after your parents, but be just when it comes to your relation with them and the relation with your spouse. Be just. Even your children. Some people, and this happens in some homes, they have more than one child. So the children begin to get children. So those children who live with them in the same home, every time we shout them, we pick on them. Why? Because they live in the same home. And when the other son's children come, because they live far away, oh, my son, where were you? What happened? These children are watching. They are seeing. Look at this grandfather of mine. These people here, does he know what they do at school and here he is embracing them it is only because we are foolish human nature makes us get irritated with those we live with sometimes and we don't know those who are really irritating are actually so close to us because they are far this is why we tell parents sometimes you need to make sure your children live a little bit of a distance from you so that you can be even closer in relation and i have seen in my life with lots of experience that those children who do not live with their parents are sometimes 
sometimes closer in relation with their parents. They have a better understanding and they have a much better relation. And I am not promoting people to abandon their parents. No, you need never to abandon your parents. If you do that, you are sinful of the highest order. But what we are saying is give each other your breathing space is very important give each other breathing space some women they get married into homes where mother-in-law sits and dishes instruction right today we will cook this 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 i'm inviting 20 people for lunch 40 people for supper tomorrow morning 60 people for breakfast but hang on man i'm one daughter-in-law here we are a few people here what's going on if this happened once a while it's okay but you cannot just sit back and dish out instructions as though this is a restaurant Mashallah, if you really want, I have a friend who owns a restaurant known as Dine More down the road. Perhaps we can go there. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I had to mention that because, you know, there are a few restaurants we've been to here. And Mashallah, the cuisine is something else. So my brothers and sisters, I'm just thinking of it. Probably the cooks are, are, are males, not females. Remember this. When you say food is very nice, a sharp woman would say, well, that's a male cook. Which means now let's eat here every other day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So the point being raised is be just, be fair, be balanced. You cannot keep it lopsided all along. Because you will have your children, they will grow up, they will get married. How do you like your daughter to be treated? Remember this. Remember, very important point. Is, is this the question? <clears throat> it is sad to know some mother-in-laws ill-treat their son's wives. For example, scold, call bad words about their family, and the husband stays silent to it. So how does he strike a balance between both? Oh, sister, this is a tough, tough question for me. Very tough. I'll tell you why it's tough. Because I think 90% of us married men uh, we encounter something like that. Some of us more than others. Hands up men, if you encounter, I don't know, I'm not going to expose you. <laughs> Create problems. You walk away thinking, I'm never coming to this uh, speaker's classes anymore. He made a big problem for me. My dear sister, I'm going to advise you something. From a psychological point of view, psychology, and naturally, your husband is in a very tough situation. His mother, you have to understand this, his mother is his authority. Which means that he can only say so much. And if he says something to her about the situation, he will normally choose a time and place where you cannot hear the conversation. Most men do that. The reason he does that is not because he's trying to hide things from you if he does that. But it's because he is afraid that his mother may say something that may hurt you more. So he settles with where he's at and talks to his mother first to see what comes out. If she says something good, Alhamdulillah, he can work from there. If she doesn't agree with him and continues, then he keeps it silent and doesn't make the situation worse. Why? Whether he likes it or not, he can only talk to his mother so much. He cannot abandon her. He cannot cut her off. He cannot talk to her in the same way. So when I see here that you're saying, and the husband stays silent, I feel as if there is blame being put on the husband. Please take it easy on your husband. Please have mercy on your husband. Because one day, you will be a mother. And one day, you will have a daughter-in-law. You will. And Allahu A'lam what kind of a daughter-in-law you'll have. And you may feel, have ill feelings towards her. You may feel that this son of yours has chosen her over you. You're the mother. You're the one who carried him. You're the one who sacrificed her life for him. And now this woman pops out of nowhere and takes him all from you. 
You're going to feel like that. Only a God-fearing woman abstains from such language. So what I can say to you, first of all, sister, is take it easy on your husband and lessen the burden off him. Let me give you an excellent piece of advice. My dear sister in Islam, I've done about, I've solemnized about 600 marriages in Australia. And half of them, they call me up and talk to me about the, their situation in the marriage and ask me very similar questions. Among the best advices I give to them, and it works, alhamdulillah, is this. No matter what your in-laws say, number one, tolerate. Tolerate their bad behavior. I know it seems harsh. I know it seems that maybe I'm not considering your own feelings, your own rights. I know I may be sounding like I'm not respecting your own dignity. Wallahi, I am. Please bear with me. Try to tolerate as much as you can from the misbehavior or mistreatment of your in-laws. If you do that, Wallahi, 90% of the time your husband will only grow to love you more. He will love you more because you are helping him. And if he loves you more, he will serve you better and he will protect you from them more. In fact, you will give him a better stance to talk to his parents, a better stance to talk to his parents the way you like. Try not to put that pressure on him. He can only go so far. Because, remember, this person you married, when he came out of his parents' life, his mother knows him inside out. His mother knows him inside out. She knows how he speaks. She knows how he deals with situations he doesn't like. So if you put too much pressure on him and force him to say certain things to your mother-in-law, and you have a right to defend yourself, wallahi, but if he goes out out of pressure from you, then he's going to say and act in a certain way that his mother knows it is not her son speaking. So then she will blame you more. She will say, this is your wife's doings. She is sending you to disrespect me because I know my son. Am I right or wrong? But having said that, having said that, this does not give the mother-in-law the right to disrespect her daughter-in-law. What happens? Her son will limit or he will, uh, he will limit his contact with his mother. Why? Because every time he visits her or he goes over with, with his wife, he comes back with a headache at home. The result? The children become psychologically disturbed. The children get raised in a dysfunctional family. Mark my words. The arguments grow because the husband is in two places. Number one, he wants to protect his wife and defend her. She's his wife. These are his children. He needs her. He loves her. She served him well. She loves him. He owes her a lot. At the same time, his mother, he owes her even more. Secondly, he has authority over his wife, but his mother has authority over him. So, he is afraid, he, he can't bring himself to tell his wife, my mother is a bad woman. My mother is a nasty woman. You know, some wives don't want to hear that from their husband. They want to hear their husband say, my mother is very wrong. My mother should have never done that. May Allah guide my mother for her mistreatment of my wife. You, your wife, don't even listen to her. You know, she tells you the next time, you don't listen to her. I will deal with her. The wife wants to hear these things. But a good, a good son who is God-fearing will never say these things. He will say simple words like, my dear wife, Malash, be patient. I know my, my mother may say things sometimes that are hurtful to you and it doesn't please me but what can I do now the first time he says it the second time he says it to you third time fourth time and in the end what what happens to him? he gets frustrated too he can't say what you want to hear because he can't backbite his mother he can't she's mother is about to die he only has a few more years before he sees her pass away he doesn't want to leave her like that 
At the same time, he wants his wife to be comfortable and happy. So then he says to her wife, look, you don't have to always go over. You don't always have to have contact with my mother. I know of, of couples where, you know, their wife sees them only on occasions. She goes to visit her, their in-laws on Eid or in Ramadan, which is fine. She's not obliged to constantly visit them in these circumstances, Yani. But the son has to continue to maintain his contact with his mother and father. My dear sister, having said this, when your husband goes and visits them, please do not ask him questions. Don't sit there asking, what did your mother say about me? You we were there for a long time. You can talk to her, mashallah. But your wife, we always argue. I wish you can talk the same way you talk to your mother with me. But you see, the problem was that when he was with his mother, his mother is pampering him, making the best food for him. I'm sure the sister does that too. But she is smarter than you because she knows her son better than you. And her son's compassion and kindness overcomes him. This is not his fault, he's born with it. And your compassion and kindness to your mother and father also overcome you, my dear sister, as well. I'm sure about that. Now, if the husband supports his mother with his ill treatment towards you, then this is zulm. This is oppression. And the husband who oppresses his wife, even if his mother is the one who causes him to do that, will be gathered with the oppressors of the world on the Day of Judgment. People like Hitler and Fir'aun. And there is no harm and no haram in the husband or the son sitting down with his mother and saying to her with the most respectful words, my mother, my dear mother, Allah is witness that I love you more than myself. My blood in my vein flows in love for you. I will do anything for you, my mother. I will cross the seven seas. But my wife, Allah has obliged me to look after her. She is not better than you. The son has to say these things to his mother. He has to say these. He has to exaggerate them. Even if he doesn't mean them 100%. You, sh you must exaggerate them to your mother. She is a human being who only wants the best for you and she loves you. So you say to her mother, what you are doing is wrong. This is the work of the son. What you are doing is wrong. The mother may respond and say, what am I doing is wrong? Is she teaching you? Mother, wallahi she is not teaching me. And you know what, mother, because of my respect and love for you, I don't want to say anything more than that. All I want to say is it's hurting me and it, it, it makes my life hard. That when, you know, words that are hurtful, it's not nice. So there's nothing wrong with saying to your mother that. And you say to your mother and hug her. So, Wallahi, I love you more than anything. You have to, you have to express these words. So 10 good things, one negative thing. And then you say to her, Mother, I will never leave you alone and my wife never can change me. No one can change me. So my mother, please, if you love your son, please help me in this manner. And if there's anything my wife does wrong, come and talk to me. Talk to me, inshallah, and I'll handle it. And in the end, if they don't listen and they keep arguing, some parents, they just don't, they just don't get it. This is what you say to them finally. You say, Mother and Father, you taught me, I didn't teach you. You know more than me, I don't know more than you. If you think that what you, what you are saying and the way you think is the right way, then keep going. And if you think it's the wrong way, then you know it. I'm not the person to tell you. I will still love you and I appreciate you. Insha'Allah your parents will go back and think about it and I'm sure insha'Allah it'll have a positive effect. So long as you are the one who talks to your parents in that manner, and you know, sister, please respect him with his privacy, with his parents. I'm sorry to take more time on that. But this is a, a very serious topic. Respect him and give him the room to talk in private with his parents. And don't burden him with too many questions. Because just as when he talks to you, you don't want him to say anything about you to his parents. Also, his parents are trusting him not to pass on the information to you. So if there's no trust, there is no relationship. 
if there is trust, there is relationship. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding, patience and success in this great trial and test. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our wives and the husbands among the righteous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. My dear brothers and sisters, please forgive me if I have said anything that offended anyone here. Uh, if I did, then it will be a mistake on my behalf. And if I have said anything wrong in accordance with Islam, uh, um, not according to Islam, that it is my mistake and Islam is innocent from my wrong words. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and knowledge and forgive us. And now let me talk to the sisters for a little bit. Sisters, you're stuck with your husband. Stop being angry. Accept it and try to love your husband. Try to make your husband happy because believe me, if he gets even a little bit happy, you will be really happy. I'm telling you, right now you say, I'm angry, why should he be happy? I know you, I know. I've talked to enough of you, I know. He, he doesn't care about me, why should I care about him? And he thinks the same thing, she doesn't care about me, why should I care about her? You start, you be nice to him. You smile at him and he'll get, he'll get all shocked, like, why are you smiling? <laughs> Who, wh wh is everything okay? <laughs> You know, is your is your mother here? Is that you know? <laughs> you know, uh, uh You have to be nice to your husband. You have to don't dress up when you go to a wedding. Dress up for your husband. Even if you have four kids, it doesn't matter. Dress up for your husband. There's enough shaitan and fitna outside. So your husband should find beauty in you, not anywhere else. You sh you should and you should be co you should compliment your wife. You should say nice things to your wife. You shouldn't just always complain. Where are the keys? Where's the mail? Did you get the, did you get the groceries? Did you do this? Did you, oh, you didn't do anything. Oh, you don't listen to me. Stop, man. There's not enough salt. There's too much salt. There's not enough sugar. There's too much sugar. There's not hot enough. It's too hot. Stop. Stop. Say nice things to your wife. And I know if you're like Indian Pakistani, then it's very difficult for you. <laughs> I know. It's very hard to say nice things to your wife. In, in our culture, if you say nice things to your wife, your ribs hurt. Like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. You know, so you have to immediately follow it up with something mean. You have to say something bad right after to balance the equation. You can't just say nice things. So if the food is really good, you're like, oh, but I still hate your mother. It's like something. You have to, <laughs> you have to add something, <laughs> you know. But don't try to be, this is the dua. We are asking Allah to give us so much happiness from our wife and our husband and our children that it makes us want to cry out of joy. How will that happen? You cannot ask Allah for something and not make any effort yourself. It doesn't work that way. You cannot say, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati. Ya Allah, make me establisher of the prayer. And you're sitting, lying down in bed, adhan's going on, you're like, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati. <laughs> It's not, Allah is not going to send you angels that carry you and lift you to the salat and then they make you make ruku and get you back up. <laughs> you got to get up yourself, man. You make dua and you make some effort yourself. You're not going to make dua and all of a sudden your wife will start loving you. No, you have to show her love too. You have to do that. You have to make some effort in the house. I am telling you, this is the work of the ummah today. Fixing the family. Fixing the family. And when our children see that the husband and wife are fighting with each other, they slip through the cracks. So they get in trouble with the mother, they run to the father. When they get in trouble with the father, they run to the mother. And they know they can do whatever they want that way. Because they know father and mother don't like each other. When father and mother are a team, oh man, then they got nowhere to go. You, went to, you go to mom, mom's like, okay, hold on, let me call your dad. Let's talk about this together. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I was hoping we could discuss this by ourselves without getting father involved. No, no, no. You know? This is hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata ayun. And why should we do this? Why should I care so much about raising a good family, being a good husband? Wallahi, when you're a good husband, your son will be a good husband. When you're a good wife, your daughter will be a good wife. Sisters. This is what's good. And if you're not, then you will create bad families down in the future. And you will be the fault. You will be the reason. So we say, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. Make us imam, make us leaders over people that have taqwa. In other words, 
Everybody who has a household is an imam. You have an imam of the masjid. You have an imam of you know, the, the musalla. But every house has an imam. You're the imam of your house. I don't care if you have a beard or not. You're the imam of your house. I don't care if you memorize Quran or not. You're the imam of your house. And you want to make sure that your household, that you are imam over, these people are muttaqeen. The last thing I want to share with you about these requirements is why? Why did Allah say, وَجْعَلَنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama On judgment day, when I stand in front of Allah as an imam over my six children and my wife, when I am imam over them, they will be tied to me. And if I didn't do my job with them, and they made mistakes because of me, their mistakes will also cost me. I will be dragged down with them. But if I raise my children correctly, and I did good with them, and they went on to serve Allah's deen, and become good people, earned good deeds, then Allah raises them. And when He raises them automatically, because I'm chained to them, He raises me. We ask Allah to be with Imam over Muttaqeen. Because we, we ask that because we need it on Judgment Day. My deeds are not enough. I'm going to need commission from my children and their children and their children.